You have to realize certain things such as, this is a short life, I came here for a reason, I'm not just a physical creature, I'm not the product of my mommy and daddy, I am a powerful being, I am on planet earth, there's other civilizations, there's other themes going on, there's this global transformational age that is actually happening right now. How do I wish to be a part of that? How do I wish to contribute to that? Know first of all that you will have total capacity to be a part of that whole transformational thing. You can contribute to that. You can look around yourself and see, oh, someone put these tiles in place. Someone built this house. Someone designed how to build a house to begin with. Why do we build houses in square shapes? It doesn't make any sense. It felt, feels very jagged. It feels very, very harsh. It doesn't feel cozy at all. Why do we do that over and over and over again? Because someone started doing it because it's perhaps practical with certain materials, but we can expand beyond that now. And this is just one example, how we can look around ourselves and not be automatically assuming that that's the way life is. And that's, you know, we're capping ourselves when we're doing that. We're limiting ourselves. We have to see everything around us as being just one optional creation. And if you see something missing in the world, go create it. Go add it to that. Don't just say, oh, something is missing from the world. I'll just watch television, complain about it, and go back to eating pizza. Do something about it if you're excited about it. Of course, if it doesn't excite you, don't do it. But if you see what's missing, design something, create something, innovate something, start a company or contact the right people or, or give suggestions to the right people so they know how to create something more um, fluently. Just an example. But vibrationally as well, we are always inundated with a collective vibration that we are a part of. And the less we are conscious of our own vibration in each moment, the more we sink into that baseline of the collective. That's why if we don't ask ourselves for too long, like what excites me? What do I want to do? What is really truly adventurous to me? What expands me? What aligns for me? If we don't ask that question for too long of a period of time, we will naturally have our frequency drop into the collective unconscious agreement of what's assumed to be reality. And then we're limiting ourselves. We're limiting our joy. We're limiting our sense of what's possible. We're limiting our sense of being alive. So we need to put that ultimatum on ourselves as if we're 100 feet below the surface of the ocean. Now, what is your most important thing in this moment? What's the most important inclination you have? What's the highest inspiration you have in this moment? What if the only thing that could save you or could bring you up vibrationally from 100 feet down and could save your life and have you breathe oxygen again? What if the only thing at 30 meters down, imagine that, being 30 meters below the water surface, looking up and seeing those tiny little people over there and having one breath to get there. What if the only thing that could get you up to the surface was you being aware of what truly inspires you, what's important to you, and making no concessions on that, letting no distractions come in when it comes to that. And then allow yourself to be elevated in that way because you are now creating your own frequency, choosing your own vibration, your own vibrational paradigm, rather than just letting the collective choose things for you or the people around you perhaps, or mommy and daddy in the back of your mind. If you manage to prioritize, you don't need any dangerous sport or, or life-threatening situation to get to that single-mindedness of clarity where you make no concessions on who you are even if it doesn't get you accepted into your communities. You don't care. You just don't care. Like it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. Because if it does matter to you, you'll drown. You need to not be concerned with these things. And again, if you're 30 meters down below the surface of the sea, then you have to. You, ha you have no other option. You wouldn't be thinking, oh, what does you know, this person think of me or why don't they like me? No, you wouldn't. You would only think of your highest inspiration. If you apply that to everyday life, then you've got a golden ticket. You can do it anywhere, anytime. You can experience that single-mindedness, that purity, that oneness within yourself. That non, you know, non, that no-nonsense policy. That no-nonsense energy, that no-nonsense state of clarity and consciousness. That's what many people seek because it feels great. It feels great, it feels fantastic, it feels whole, it feels complete. You feel simultaneously at peace, deeply at peace, because you know you're doing the right thing, because you know you're in alignment, and you're feeling simultaneously passionate, excited, and available to what's next and to what shows up as the most in alignment aspect of your life. Ready to act, ready, ready to engage, ready to create, to not be fooled, ready to bring in something new instead of mimic the old and assume it 
to be life as it is. Create something new, you know.